Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bolt Action Basics. Uh, hopefully the series that helps those that are new to wargaming or, or even those that are just new to bolt action. Um, and, and hopefully you'll, you'll learn a lot as we go through. Um, we're actually getting our way through quite a series now. There's uh, five videos out um, covering uh, what you need for the game. Um, we've done some plastic figures assembling them. We've done some painting. Um, we've done bases, uh, we've done all sorts, and, and, and we're moving on today to uh, another area of bolt action, um, that and wargaming in general, that, that might be helpful to you. So, what have we got? Well, um, and I must apologise first of all, before we move on, I'm sorry that we've got a bit of mess over here. Um, we, I'm actually working on some terrain for some, uh, for Gates of Antares, um, and that'll come in some videos for that series. So if you're interested in a bit of sci-fi gaming, uh, check out Gates of Antares and, and, and some of my videos that'll be coming up shortly. So what have we got today? We have from Warlord Games, the, uh, the German Blitzkrieg, uh, Kradschutzen, uh, motorcycle and sidecar from 1939 through to 42. Uh, really, really like this. Um, I've seen, and I'll put a link up on the, on the on the, in the comments box um, with with the link to this kit on the Warlord Games website. Um, it, it's a great kit. Just you know, from looking at it, I've, I've had it out. I've looked at it a little bit. It's an absolute great kit. Um, all metal components. Okay, um, so. Uh, so we're going to be working on a vehicle that is purely metal. Now, um, I'll do a, a few different videos. Um, in fact, I've not actually got the time. I will be back in a second. Wait there. Okay. So here's uh, another vehicle. The, there are basically three types uh, of vehicles that you will find in, uh, in Wargaming. Um, there are resin, resin cast, um, models much like this tiger okay it's all hard plastic um, and it or it's not quite hard plastic it's um, that's a good question I'll, 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 I'll I won't say anything because I don't want to be wrong um, I'd rather just not tell you but basically it's resin resin cast um, it's solid um, this one actually has metal components to stick on so you could say that it this isn't a complete resin vehicle it's it's a resin vehicle with some metal parts to add okay then you have vehicles that are just metal such as the basically the BMW Z3 motorcycle with um, I think it's a Z3 I can't remember I'm, I know my grandfather nearly bought brought one of these back from Malta uh, in the 50s um, but um, I can't remember the, but it's a BMW motorcycle with sidecar basically. Um, so there's the metal ones, and then you also get uh, some vehicles like my US half track, which uh, I guess I've packed away in a box somewhere for protection. Um, but that is a pure a plastic kit that you build, um, hard plastic, much like the figures. Um, I will probably, uh, I don't know, maybe buy a, a plastic Sherman for my Americans. Um, a little bit down the road, um, or maybe a Panzer IV, or I don't know. I, I'm going to try find a hard plastic um, tank or vehicle, and, and I will do that as a tutorial about how to build um, a, a plastic kit vehicle. Okay, so there's three types. Today we're going to focus on all metal. Um, another time we'll look at resin, um, which don't, doesn't take a lot of assembly. Okay, um, that'll be another tutorial, and then as I say, the hard plastic. So, what do we need? I should have brought the pieces over with me. Um, we need a hobby cutter. So, just like this, we've seen these before in the kind of what do we need um, videos. Uh, you need some super glue, super glue uh, for metal to metal parts. Um, probably a file is quite handy to have. Um, and that's just for, you know, if there's a little bit of sprue marks or you cut a bit off and there's still a little bit of metal that shouldn't be on there, you can just file that off. Um, that's quite handy to have as well. And the final thing, um, particularly for the Warlord ones, um, is instructions. So 
Uh, with the metal kits, uh, they have a lot of construction diagrams on the website. Now, what I've done uh, is I've actually downloaded that picture and printed it off. Um, and when we go over to the workbench in just a minute, excuse me, just had lunch. Um, when I go over to the workbench, I will show you the printed off version that I have for that. Um, and really, apart from that, I'm expecting this is probably going to take maybe 10 minutes to assemble. So, on that basis, let's go cameras down, move over to the workbench, which is a little bit messy, better tidy that first, um, and, and we'll put this together. Okay, I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, sorry about the, the mess, I have plenty of French and Japanese figures that I need to uh, finish built painting, so they're all uh, lying in wait, and, uh, and my Concorde of all about the place as well so um, so here's the diagram that I have printed off Warlord are very good and they uh, often in on a lot of their kits that need some sort of assembly will uh, have these diagrams now I've just blown this up on into a word document and uh, print it off and I'm gonna have that uh, just here so that I can make sure I know what I'm doing so let's open this up the back pops out okay and and I know you might be thinking well why is he explaining that that's obvious well the first time I ever got a bolt action pack I didn't realize you could do that so I ended up trying to cut in through the plastic and it was tough and uh, I felt really stupid when I found out that the back just popped off so there we go okay um, one of the things that uh, you may want to do um, especially with metal metal parts, metal figures, um, is to get some warm soapy water, take an old toothbrush, and just give them a good clean, okay? And, and that gets any of the chemicals that might have uh, got onto the model um, during the, um, uh, the, what do we call it, the, um, uh, the casting process. Um, if there's anything on there, it'll get it off the hot soapy water and what that also does um, is it just cleans it up nicely so that uh, when it comes to priming it and painting it um, the the paint will stick better so um, I'm just gonna very quickly go through and see if I can find any kind of uh, bits that need to be either cut off or, or um, filed off I'm not seeing a lot which Tells you a lot about the Warlord figures um, and models. They are very good. It's a small bit there, but nothing that a, I, I literally twisted that bit off with my finger, so that, that's sort of how bad that was. Um, this I'm just going to need to cut off. Always nervous about cutting bits that I'm not quite sure what they look like because I don't want to cut too much. Okay, barrel is off. Okay. And with the barrel, guys, you know, and for a lot of castings, if you've got barrels, uh, let's see, where are we here? All right, this often will come out a little bit crooked. Just, you know, take it nice and gently, a little bit of tweaking at a time so that you don't uh, break the, the, that wasn't the barrel, that was the support part just out in case you were worried, um, you know, just so that it doesn't snap off. Uh, there is a support on this one um, where the the MG rests on the uh, the motorcycle itself, so that has to make sure you don't cut that off if you're doing this particular model. Okay, that's the best way of doing that. Uh, that gets that last bit off and we're good okay let's just make sure it's mg the mg is a little bit fragile um not a lot of detail on his back it's probably because he's going to be sat in the sidecar like so okay uh, how are we doing that okay so he's now in the sidecar so um i can go ahead and stick him in by the looks of things it doesn't look like it's going to get too fiddly around where he is so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead 
I'm going to get some super glue, which I have here. Just some. I have some simple Loctite super glue. It's a liquid one. Works very well. Uh, and I'm just going to look for points of contact very quickly before I go to stick this down. Now, looking at him, looks like his backside obviously is in contact with the seat. His back's in contact. So that's important. I'm also going to do just the end of where his legs are uh, because they'll make contact with the front. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the uh, machine gun rest post as well, just so that I've got a really good um, sort of uh, make sure I'm getting it glued down firmly because what I don't want to do is for it to come off. Unless I make a mistake, in which case I'm really going to want to get it off. But hopefully, if I take my time, shouldn't have any problems with that. So that's the first piece. Um, oh, and he's he's just jumped out. He was not happy. Uh, right, let's get him back in quickly. I have bent the machine gun a little bit, but we can straighten that up while it glues. Okay, that looks like it's gluing the machine gun. Uh, you can, I can tweak that a little bit though. Okay, let's have a look at what else we've got to do. So, let's take another bit out, see where it is. Um, I mean, you guys, you might want to take them all out first, investigate what they are, clean them up, and then have a go. I'm just literally taking them out, finding where they go, and, and sticking them on. Um, come on over there. That bit there. It's always good to look at the instructions first. I, I did do that, by the way. Um, just to have a look and see where bits go. I think that is, well, that's that bit there. Yeah, that's the key. Oh, that's, that looks like that should be fiber, isn't it? Okay. So this piece is gonna go underneath here. Now there are some bits cut out. Is that for that? No, that's not. But there is like a little knobbly bit and a gap for it to go in. And that looks like that's going to go perfectly. Now he's still moving. I'm not happy with the fact he's still moving. So yeah, he's going to come out. That's not good. Right. We're going to take him out for a moment. Just so I can get this bit right. Clearly I either put too much super glue on or not enough super glue. But. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue this part on. Try not to put too much super glue on this time. There we go. Right. Okay. So that's on. I'm just going to hold that for a second just to let that dry. Um, and what I, I I think it's like the underframe or something, uh, perhaps with the I think the wheels are going to fit on maybe. No, it's going to connect. It's going to connect to the um, motorcycle shortly. While I'm letting that dry, I'm just going to get the wheels off. couple little bits but nothing major and that's going to go on the side uh, it actually has three uh, this is the wheel and it's got three parts uh, three sort of I'm sorry about the light behind but if you can just see it's got three parts that are raised up all right I can't actually get that there you go there they actually fit into the side in those three holes there so that's going to be quite handy so uh, like I do quite a lot of times we're going to do a quick um, just a dry fit see make sure that it fits and I know where it's going and then I'll apply the glue and put it back on
Okay, and it's starting to look like a sidecar now, which is always promising, especially when that's what's on the box. So, uh, passenger, let, let's, um, let's take some of the stowage. Uh, we'll put the stowage on first. Uh, we've got a couple of, they look like, uh, sort of uh, saddlebag sort of jobs. So there's one. Check there's nothing on top. Yeah, that looks good. And here's the second. Okay, and there's the second, slightly smaller one. Now, on the instructions, uh, it actually explains where the larger one goes, just down here. Uh, it's going to go on the side of the sidecar. And then we've got the um, smaller one, which is going to fit on the exact opposite side, I guess, of that sidecar between that and the, the, the motorcycle front wheel. So, has this dried now? Yep, that, that looks pretty dry to me. Um... There doesn't seem to be any markings as to where the the saddlebags go. So I am going to make an educated guess here. Um, which is always entertaining. Sometimes it's helpful. I mean, if, guys, if you're doing this near a computer or you've, you've got a picture on your phone of the Warlord version, you know, what, what have they got on the website? What does it look like? Uh, and it, it can be very useful to uh, kind of use that as your guide as to where they go and what they look like. So, yeah, always worth a, a look at, at what they've what they've done. Just found a couple of bits that I don't want on there. And that came off very easily, as did this one. Okay, and this time we're going to put on the smaller packet. Uh, what do you call it? The smaller saddlebag. I'll just put it on the front there. And I do hate using super glue because I always stick my fingers together. So I'll take one for the team on this one, I guess. As I did purchase this, I suppose it is only my own fault. Um, good, good, good. Right. Next thing to come out, next part to come out, we've got the driver, the rider, um, who's looking pretty clean. And we've got his arms with the handlebars. Now the handlebars, I don't know if you can see that, are attached to his arms and I've just had to spread his arms a little bit and we'll be uh, working out how to get those on him. Sort of working out how far apart they need to be, that's what I mean. Um, the other thing that we want to do as well on this one, guys, is to also think about the position that the rider's going to be in on his motorcycle. Because obviously, if we put his arms on and glue them and they're too high up, as in the, the, uh, the handlebars aren't actually connected to the motorcycle then it's going to look wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a dry test run. I've put the arms on. I've put them pretty much near his knee, actually. I don't know if you can see that. It's a bit blurry, but... Basically, his arms are pretty much resting on his knees. So let's see whether this lines up. He's on his seat. He's on the pedals, and his arms have fallen off. This is the problem with dry runs, guys, but they are so, they can be so important at times, just just so that you don't sort of do it and think, ah, oh, no, I've got to pull it apart, you know, end of the world sort of job. Right, he's on the seat, and he's, I think he's going to be leaning forward a bit, if I'm honest. Because to get his arms... Yeah, he, yeah. Okay, it's going to be a little bit of an interesting job, a little bit fiddly, but we're going to go for it. We are going to go for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue 
Hmm, what am I going to do? Am I going to glue him on first and then his arms? Or am I going to glue his arms and then place him on the motorbike? Hmm, this is a tricky decision. What I'm going to do, I think I'm going to put his arms on first. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put his arms on. We're going to hope we get him in a position. And then if they're not quite working. Oh, that's a lot of super glue there, Carl. Come on. If they're not quite in the right position, we're going to change his body position on the bike so that they are. Now, as I've said in many videos before, guys, this is not the only way to do it. You know, this is not the right way the, or the, the only way to do it. This is just how I do it, as well as sticking my fingers together. Right. Very much avoiding using some choice language while on camera. Did I mention, guys, I hate working with super glue. I, I absolutely loathe it. It has its advantages. But sticking my fingers together is not one that should be promoted. Absolutely hate the stuff because you, you, you go to hold it in place. You've, you hold it in place, but then you find out your fingers are stuck to it or stuck together. You can't remove them because if you do, you pull out the model kind of thing. Oh, it's all very frustrating, but hey, never mind. First world problems and all that. Nothing that a bit of soap and water can't solve. Right. Once his arms are dry, I'm going to stick him on the bike, get him in position. Um, I might actually, before I do that, just attach the sidecar. Now, this is where being a motorcycle expert, or not being a motorcycle expert, is going to play against me. I think this needs to be straightened out. Because I think that's going to go underneath the body like that. That's going to go in that part there. There's a little hole under... Uh, yeah, okay, we've got it. I think we've got it. It does need to be higher because that's got to be... Yeah, okay, we've got it. So, here we go. Fingers crossed, team. I do feel like you're helping me out on this, so thank you very much for that. And I appreciate all the... all You know, everybody who views and watches and... And, and comments and you know you know there's a lot of great people out there who put out a lot of positive comments um and i really appreciate that that makes me you know that that encourages me to keep going uh, and to keep helping you guys out where i can uh at the end of the day i'm just a hobbyist like all you guys so although i may come across Sounding like I think I know what I'm talking about. I don't, you know, I, I, I kind of try and I, I learn from what I do. Hmm. Why does that just not look right? Oh, oh, don't push too hard. Metal soft. Sorry, guys. What I'm trying to do is just, um, just trying to sort of straighten out the sidecar in relation to the motorcycle because it looks like the the motorcycle is leaning in towards no all right I fixed it yeah the motorcycle is leaning in towards the the sidecar and so it looked like the wheels were kind of going to go against each other but i've managed to straighten it up now and i'm just waiting for that to glue um, while i'm doing that i'm going to make a choice on oh I've pulled that head head off. I'm just gonna make a choice as to what um, what heads I want to use. I've got one that hasn't got goggles on. I've got two with goggles, and one of the ones with goggles has like a kind of bit of cloth over the face. Um, obviously, the driver, I would imagine, had, this is the thing. If he if it's in northwest northwest Europe. The chances are he's probably not going to need the face mask. I might save that for a later time to use for a desert um, Africa core because they would have had the masks. Um, and I'm pretty sure this motorcycle is used in that as well. So maybe I'll be able to make a figure up and 
I don't know. I'm not going to use that one. I am going to use the goggles on the rider. And oh, if I didn't drop it. And I will use the guy without goggles for the machine gun. So that's what I'm going to do. So dry fit first. So that's what we do. Bit of a long neck on, might have to trim a bit off. And guys, don't be too don't be too afraid, you know, if, if the neck is a little bit long, you know, it's sitting up a bit high, it doesn't quite work, you know, don't worry about it, just cut a bit off. Take it easy though, don't don't go lopping off tons because obviously. Once you cut it off, you can't put it back on too easily. But there we go. We've got his head on. Can't get that into focus, but his head is on. So he adds glue. So once that's once that dry, put him on the seat. Put him on the edge there. Then we'll be good to go. The other guy, I'm going to go for the non ma non goggled guy. Save the head. Always useful to save the head. Whoa! This guy's falling forward. All right, I think his head's dry now, so. Super glue really doesn't take that long, quite often. That's mm, a lot of neck, but we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. And just in case you missed at any point during the video, I just want to say now, I hate working with super glue. I understand its importance and its effectiveness, but that doesn't mean that I enjoy it, if I'm wholeheartedly honest. Another head going on now. Okay. And that guy's now firmly in place. So, I th oh, oh, hello. What is this? Ah, that's a bit to hold on to for the passenger on the back. So I'm going to, I nearly forgot to cut that off. It's a little ring. Yeah, and that goes on the, behind the, front seat of the motorbike basically it's just in front of the back seat and it's for the guy to hold on to so he doesn't fall off i haven't actually got a guy on there i, I think you can get the guy or if you get the uh just the motorcycle by itself uh it comes with um a guy on the back rather than having a guy on the sidecar but we'll put it on there because it's supposed to be there and it, it'll look good if I can get it glued on. And again, this is the problem with, uh, it's the problem with having super glue on your hands is that you have super glue on your hands and it sticks to your hands. And now it's falling down between the sidecar and motorbike, which is never easy. I do wrap it on. I'm surprised my wife hasn't mentioned that before yet now, but I certainly do wrap it on, and I apologise to all you viewers. Right. Just in case I get this out before next Tuesday, the 8th of December, just to let you guys know, uh, I will be doing a live discussion with Richard Dan at Dando from Warlord Games, Andy Singleton from Volleyfire Painting Services, and Jez Allen from Jez's Painting Blog. Um, we'll be doing that live on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out before, go ahead and check that out. In fact, of course you've checked it out, you're watching the videos. But if you uh, haven't seen any of the videos before, go check them out. Um, as in like, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say, guys. Just go check it out on the, on the channel. It'll be great. Okay, time to put the rider on. Passenger is on. Okay, the arms were a little bit high. Okay, let's just snap the arms off like that and then we'll re glue them. Oh, and his head's come off. Oh, this German's not having a good day. His arms just popped off. Uh, his. Not quite sure he's in the seat. Oh, motorcycle's moving. Right. Yeah. 
please be pl proud of me, guys. I'm not resorting to uh, name calling and all sorts of other things that are going around in my head at the moment. Okay, we're going to glue this guy on, whether he likes it or not. I'm just going to put a bit of glue down and hope for the best. May just have to. I've just put some. Ah, and that and that ring thing that I've just glued on has fallen off. Tell you what, guys, I'm not having a good day here with 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 super glue and and just general craft here. I thought this was going to be a quick, easy build. It it should. I'm sure for all those experts out there, um, Andy Singleton. I know you're going to be watching. I know that you're going to be like this. Should have taken him ten minutes. And it probably would take you 10 minutes, mate. But this super glue and I do not like each other. And I'm sure if Jez watches this before Tuesday, he's going to make fun of me. Yeah. I feel like if Jez makes fun of me, I've made it in the world. Right, get back on it. Go. Ah, oh, bugger. You know what, guys? This bit might actually just not make it on. Now it's just fallen off. You know what? That handle, not really important in my opinion. I'll keep it on the side just in case I ever come back to it, but it's not, not going to happen today. Right, there was a bit under here that was a bit unsure. Yeah, there it is. Oh my goodness. I think people are just going to stop watching in a minute, or they're going to keep watching for the comic value. But either way, it's not going well today for me. Making contact. Good. Oh, stop gluing your fingers. Right. Let's get this guy's head back on first of all. And then we will attempt to glue him again. Oh, his head actually got stuck to my workbench. That's good. Okay, while I stick this last guy on, let me just mention very quickly, if you have liked this video, uh, please like, comment, share. Um, if you really like it and you're not already a subscriber and you want to watch more, uh, please subscribe. Um, the, the support is fantastic and really appreciated uh, and, and we're getting more subscribers every day. So really, really pleased with the popularity of it and how, how well it's going. Um, yeah, just, just keep liking, keep sharing. Um, tell your friends if they're bolt action players, let them know, and um, hopefully we can keep getting these videos out. Okay. Oh, it's going horrible. I tell you guys what, we're we're at this in a minute. I, I'm probably gonna stop the camera and I'm just gonna sort it out, swear at it, come back. And be like, ah, there we go, guys. It was absolutely all fine in before. Because that's what this might take, this project. And and to be truthful, guys, that happens in, in hobbying. Sometimes it just doesn't go right. And sometimes you just swear at it, and you put it down, and you walk away, and you come back to it later. Okay, well, I'm going to let this dry, guys. Uh, once I've got it um, all glued together, I will come back and I will tell you just my last few points. And then I'll call it a day. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, so we've managed to somehow keep our sanity. Um, the big problem I was having was, firstly, the rider won't... Uh, it's tricky. His body isn't really necessarily in the right position. It it doesn't look quite right. Um, and the arms don't seem to... I mean, it's almost like the body is... Uh, when it sits in the seat, it's at, an, it's at the wrong angle. It's kind of 
angled towards the passenger and so the handlebars when you put the arms on that don't fit particularly well um i've had to try and work it uh it which has been quite tricky that the steering wheel doesn't though the the handlebars don't actually meet up with the front forks now this may just be me not being very good at this but um i will speak to my contact at Warlord and see if they've had any other feedback um, about about this particular uh, model because um, I'd be interested to see whether it's just me or whether it's others but it is done um, it's going to be a devil to paint because you kind of got to get in places and I've decided now I was going to tell you guys I don't put vehicles on bases this one came with a 60 mil base um, and I think I am actually going to put this on a base. Now, the reason I don't usually put vehicles on a base is because, to be fair, vehicles go on gravel, they go on sand, they go on uh, cobblestone streets, tarmac streets, they go across open fields, you know, particularly tanks, um, but also motorcycles as well. And so I don't like, you know, I like to be able to put it down on a road and say it's, you know, and it looks like it's on the road. However, I'm considering because of there's not a lot of stability about it, I'm actually tempted to put it on the base to give it that element of stability. And it does look quite good, to be fair, on the base. So I may end up doing that, and I'll probably just... I'll probably put green stuff over the base to start with, uh, and, and you know then I can get some like uh, potholes in there, and I can just kind of paint it up and, and gravel it over a little bit and make it look... Uh, like some sort of dirt track road um, so that's it from me guys um, thank goodness after uh, quite a few 10-20 minutes of swearing um, and, and it's going to take me at least double that to just get the glue off my hands but apart from that not a bad kit a um, little bit fiddly you're going to need patience with it um, and, and you know what at, at a certain point you have to just kind of say okay it's the best that I can do um, we're going to move on. So there we go. There is the German uh, Kradschutzen motorcycle and sidecar 1939-42. Um, as I've said before, if you've liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you've had any issues doing this model or, or you've done it and you've got it done just fine, please, I'd love to hear hear your experiences of, with using this kit. Um, apart from that, guys, um, you know, feel free to subscribe and uh check us out check out the other videos and we'll see you in a, a another video very soon okay until then take care bye